In this video, we're going to have a look at the TK Inter Frame Widget and how it can be viewed from the Object Orientated Paradigm. Let's consider these two program statements. The first line creates the instance of a frame and the second line will position this frame on the window. Now, which window will it position it on? This one here. And earlier in the program, I would have created an instance of a window called my underscore window and here you can see I'm passing in various values to named arguments here I'm setting the height of the frame to 150 pixels the width to 150 the relief I'm making raised the border is going to be size 8 and the background color of the frame is going to be red Let's walk through the execution of this computer program and I'm going to do so with reference to the execution space that we've seen many times throughout this series on Python programming. Now the execution space is essentially the computer's memory. If we consider this line of code and look at this here, we can see that says frame. Now this is the class. Now on the diagram, I can show the class as shown here and we know a class will have a name it'll have properties and it'll have methods the other name used by Python for properties and methods are attributes but I prefer the term properties and methods as it's more generic to all kinds of object oriented programming languages diagrammatically we can show the first program statement executing as follows we can see we have the class here from the class we produce an instance of the class i.e. the object and I'm showing that instance being created using this arrow here now from the purpose of the diagram I now like to think of the arrow no longer being needed because we now have the object in the execution space and this object is based upon the frame class and we don't really need the frame now the frame class that is we are only interested in the instance of the frame i.e. the object of course it's this bit of code here that was responsible for producing the instance of the frame class i.e. the object and we can see that that is assigned to this here frame underscore a and I can show that on the diagram by labeling the object with frame underscore a as you can see here of course this instance will now have various attributes set according to what's been passed in here so for example the height of the frame will be 150 the width will be 150 and so on now all of that information is appearing within this object let's now consider this program statement and we can see it's a message it is a message because we can see here we have dot notation this is the name of the objects to which we send this message and I can show that appearing within the animation as shown here and you can see the message goes in taking with it the row equals zero and column equals zero now what this will do it'll invoke the method inside here and that method will ensure that the frame the instance of the frame we have created will be placed on this window where this window would have been created earlier in the program I'm just showing two lines of the code here now so we're quite clear this is frame underscore a now that gets at this object because of course we've labeled it with the label frame underscore a all of this is a message which I'm showing here in the diagram and of course we're going to be invoking one of the methods where that method would be the grid method associated with this instance of the frame class this object the runtime for this program will be as shown here and if you look you can see that we have the window and within the window we have the frame and look at the frame you can see it's red and that's because here we set BG equal to red we can see it's raised if you look at the edges of the border and that's because we put the relief to raised and you can see it's quite thick the border and that's because we put the border width to 8 now this window is the window here 
and we would have created that earlier in the program which I haven't shown because I'm only showing these two lines of code at the moment but we can see that this widget is 150 by 150 it's got a relief that's raised it's got a border width of 8 and it's got a background color of red let's now consider these two lines of code and you can see that what we're doing in this is we're creating two frames we're creating two instances of the frame class so let's show the class appearing and if we look at the first line it is in fact the same as the one we looked at in the previous snippet of code and what this is going to do is going to result in an instance of the frame class being created I'll remove that arrow now and of course this instance is going to be labeled as frame underscore a why is it frame underscore a because this is what we have here so what we've done we've created an instance of the frame class if we go on to this line we're producing another instance of a frame and I'm going to show that appearing in the animation as you can see here and of course I'll take that arrow away now because I'm emphasizing that this instance exists in the execution space by itself as separate from the class also it's separate from the other object that is in the execution space now this one is going to be labeled frame underscore B because that's the name shown here in the code so we can see now that these two lines have created two instances of the same class the frame class now once we've created the instances we really are not much bothered about the class so I'm going to remove that from the diagram now we can clearly see we have two objects in the execution space and both have been based upon the frame class I think it's important however that we realize these objects although based upon the same class and have many things in common they'll have all the same properties they'll have all the same methods their properties are going to be set differently for example if we look at this piece of code this first line we can see that the relief is raised well, if we look at the other frame, we can see the relief is sunken. Here we can see the background color is red, and here we can see the background color is green. So this object will have a relief that's raised, and its background color will be red. And its width and height will be 150, and its border width will be 8. If we come across to this object, its height and width will also be 150 its border width will be 8 but its relief will be sunken and its background color will be green so they are based upon the same class they exist in their own right and in their own right they have different settings for the attributes within the instance within the object having created both instances let's now add another two lines to this program as shown here and you can see that the first one is a message to frame underscore a that's going to invoke the grid method and the second one is also a message that's going to invoke the grid method but it's going to invoke the grid method within the instance that's labeled frame underscore b so if we consider this program statement and look to the animation we can see that we're sending in the message that's going to invoke grid and we're passing in row equals zero and column equals zero if we look at this line of code we can see that's going to go to the other object that's in the execution space and this will also invoke the grid method in this object and if we have a look at the row and column you can see that's a row of zero being sent in and column is being set to one so we will have these two objects created and placed within different positions due to the different parameters we're passing in this one will be in row zero column zero and this one will be in row zero column one now the runtime will look like this and we can see we have the window and within the window we have the two frame widgets 
if we look at this one we can see that's the red one which is this one in the execution space and that one was created here and was positioned by this line of code if we have a look at this widget it's this one in the execution space which was created by this line of code and was positioned by this line of code so we can see the red one is in row zero column zero and the green one is in row zero column one let's now look at the full program for putting two frames onto a window we can see that we require this as we've done for all of the programs we wrote so far on TK Inter in this playlist this creates the instance of the window which is used here and here within the code and of course these two lines are responsible for creating an instance of a frame these two lines are responsible for positioning those instances once they're created and this well we've seen this many times this is required to create the event loop now when this program executes what we're going to see is this I would like to make a recommendation and the recommendation is this always create your instances first and then position them now it is possible to move this dot grid to this position here and to move this one to this position I'm going to recommend you do not do that now the reason for that recommendation is when you do it this way this is a clearly identifiable instance that you can get at via this name and this is a clearly identified instance that you can get at with this name doing it the way that I've illustrated previously is okay for some cases but I would recommend until you understand the nuances of the differences always create your instances first and then position them let's emphasize the last point by looking at another program where here you can see I'm creating three instances of the frame class and then those three instances are being positioned and if we look at the first three instances being created we can see they all have the same height and width they all have the same border width but if we look at the colors we can see they're red green and blue and if we look at the relief you can see they're raised sunken and groove and here we're positioning frame a at row zero column zero frame b is being positioned in the same row but in column one and frame c is being positioned at row one which is a row further down from zero and column two and of course we have the usual lines of code that we need for our TK inter programs so when this program executes what we will get is this these gray areas well that's just the background color of the window check out the supporting website for these videos in addition why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video